Sasha Miller. I'm a multidisciplinary artist, so I work mostly in painting and printmaking. Um, mostly painting right now just because I don't have access to a print studio, but in everything that I do, I really capture people. So painting, it's always been, um, por it started out as portraits that were a lot more individual. Um, it was all about the identity of that specific person. Um, and then that kind of moved toward really focusing on the details of um, skin and the intricacies of colors and details and really focusing on the blemishes actually. So things like cellulite and scars and wrinkles and freckles and the things that aren't usually depicted in paintings. Um, so I had a huge focus on that actually just in my ro most recent, recent show. Um, and it was, I was working a lot in circular panels, um, kind of using it as like a microscope to really focus in on those things. So it went from being an identity and like really individualistic to these really universal, um, really universal paintings that I think a lot of people could relate to. Um, and then printmaking, I, it's people too. I use a lot of self-portrait work in printmaking. Um, and then for my most recent um, printmaking project, it was a book that I was recreating. So it was my grandma had written, my grandma's from Switzerland, my whole family's from Switzerland. And she had to leave there, so she wrote a little story for my whole family. And it took us through the whole house. The house there was called the, Morg the Morgensone. Which is um, called, which is Morgan, uh, Morning Sun in English, and yeah. So it was this book of this little foxglove fairy that went through the whole house, and it told little stories, and it had photos of all of us in there. Um, so I, and it's a little picture book that I have. So then I recreated all the pictures. Um, I hand drew new ones um, in like copper etching plates, and I set the type. I translated it all too with my mom's help. So from German to English. So I translated everything um, and then set it all in type and it's almost finished. I think there's like four pages missing from it um, because the studio closed, but yeah, so it's, that's kind of what I do. <laughs> well, the very beginning is just choosing who I'm going to paint. Um, and I'm sure that you've seen, but a lot of them are very intimate portraits. So I've really been working, the way I started all this was working with the women in my life and people who know me and who trust me because it is a very intimate, kind of vulnerable experience. Um, so really the first thing is just asking someone to see if they feel comfortable with it, because not everybody is. But yeah, so once I have the person that I'm gonna paint, then I usually will set aside a time, we'll arrange it and we'll do a little like photo shoot together. Um, and then I take like 200 photos <laughs> just to figure out what I want. Cause even going in, I don't always know exactly the angles and things that I want. So I just will spend a couple hours just taking photos and talking and just like, I do like to make it as comfortable as possible. Cause I know it, it is very, a very vulnerable experience. Um, and then I go through and filter through the 200 photos and find the ones that I really like. Um, I usually sit with them a bit and I have, we'll have a group of like 10 or 20 and slowly start to cut them down. And then, yeah, and then I'll go for the one. I used to do a lot of um, projection, so I would get a copy made and I would project it and do an outline um, just to get it exact with the anatomy, but um, I've moved away from that now. I do still do photography, but I just, I just look at the photo and do my own drawing now, which I kind of like too, because it adds in its own little differences too. Um, and then, yeah, I, I do, I make, I work on um, birch a lot, so like wood panel. I like how hard it is, I guess, with, can with canvas, there's that bounce back to it. And with all the detail I do, I just find the panel works a lot better. So I always um, prep that. I usually um, add backing to it too, so I make them all instead of buying them, which is a little bit of a process too. I usually get my family or boyfriend or someone to help me build it. Um, and then, yeah, I gesso it a million times and then do the drawing and I usually do a wash of some kind. So just like a thin wash of like, usually like a yellow ochre or something just as the background. So I'm not painting. I don't really like to paint directly on white. Um, and if it's yellow, that brings the warmth through a little bit too. So yeah, I do that and then I just kind of start and I always try to do my first layer pretty quick. Um, I used to work really, really slowly. Um, just section by section and it would take forever but I found with oil paint I work with oil paint and with that especially it looks better and fleshier and fuller the more layers you put in there so yeah I will start with a pretty quick base layer and then 
let that dry and then just go back into it. And I usually end up spending like a month probably on a painting. Um, and we'll just work on it until it's exactly what I want, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, it's usually a pretty long process. Cool. Yeah, I feel like I'm, yeah, it's like the first thing I notice about people too. I just like go right into like zoning into little things and I, I feel like I drive my friends and family crazy because I'm always like, oh my gosh, can I paint that? Like I want to paint your hands, I want to paint your shoulder. It's always little things where people are, like things that people don't really look at or that they try to conceal on purpose. So I like bringing that into the light a bit and just focusing on it because they're really, all those markings are just experience and personality and things that really should be given a platform but aren't usually so it's always changing it goes from like hyper realism to kind of a combination I've always liked to combine basically hyper realism and abstraction in different ways and sometimes the abstraction is in whatever base layer I'm doing um, the ones in the window gallery have this blue acrylic that I use um, so that's kind of abstract and some, so sometimes the abstraction comes from the actual painting and sometimes it's just in the cropping of the image um, and just that super close up look to it abstracts what the actual subject matter is. My whole family is very science medicine based. My parents are both, my dad's a doctor, my mom's a nurse, my sister's in med school, like it's all very medicine at my house so I actually growing up it was a lot of like talking about that and about science and math and I think I rather than I did the opposite of my sister instead of going into that kind of field I basically did the exact opposite and my parents were like oh okay something very different so I do know my grandma on my dad's side is an artist um, so that might be where it comes from but yeah, it was never something that I grew up with. I just always liked it and I did move away from it a bit. I did a lot of art in high school and then I went and did a business diploma after because I wasn't sure what I was going to do with art. Um, and then after that business diploma, I had this innovation and entrepreneurship class and that was really creative and I realized that I needed something creative in my life. So um, then I did my BFA after that. Um, I think short term, I just want to keep building up my own presence in the community. Um, I really need to get better at using my Instagram page and any kind of social media because it just does not, has never come naturally to me. Um, and building a website too. I have like started building that um, and I'm working on two commissions right now. I have another one coming up. So I think short term it'll be like keep building those commissions and sales that way, maybe applying for a couple more shows um, just to see where that takes me. Um, and then long term, I think some kind of a master's program that maybe isn't completely focused on art, but also I would do, I do want to make sure that art is a part of my future. I'm just not sure what that looks like right now. I think so. I, yeah, and I had put it off for a while because I wasn't sure where I wanted to go or what I wanted to work on, but actually I think it was only two days ago now. I am facilitating this photography group with work and the other facilitator showed me a photo that he'd taken of his grandma's hands. And she's 101 and it was like a portrait of her hands. And I just immediately was like, I want to paint that. <laughs> um, and I said that and he was kind of shocked and was like, really, would you do that? And he sent me an email actually and asked if I would. And so that's kind of what's starting this new commission. But I think I, yeah, I just, have this obsession with skin. I don't know where it came from or where it started. It, I, well, actually did. There's one painting in my studio where I think that's the one that started it, but it was probably in my second year of university and I didn't realize it would be an ongoing thing, but um, yeah, skin just kind of seems to keep coming up as a theme for me, so. And it's been always people close to me. Um, and yeah, there's just like a lot of I just have a lot of incredible women in my life and so that in itself kind of created a body of work because it was just people who are important to me and as soon as I have that then I have that drive and that passion and I'm excited to paint them and it's just yeah it, I don't even know what to say after that but it <laughs> I just love it <laughs> it was always like the work always came from like school assignments and things is like where it started um, and so I had this one portrait that I did of my mom's best friend and then that one kind of started working in such like high realism um, and then I did a few more and that created this kind of portrait body of work that I have and then in my grad year um, I started those the ones that were a bit more cropped and that were very they're the nude portraits 
Um, and those ones kind of created their own, like from there that created its own thing. So I don't really know. It almost kind of morphs depending on what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> And also just the show that I had to apply for at Neutral Ground, that really spurred a new body of work. So I made that I made that body of work specifically for the show, which I think actually worked quite well. I had a um, proposition for it um, and all these ideas and I was able to actually make the amount that I wanted and kind of kept the idea consistent through it. So I'm still kind of figuring that out, it changes, but um, yeah, that's actually why I hadn't started anything new and had been just doing commissions because I hadn't had a new idea. But ever since seeing those hands, I think I'm probably going to start something there because, yeah, there was just something about them that I was very excited about. So I think my favorite is just like the creativity of it, being able to come to my studio and spend eight hours just like working and doing things that I enjoy and working with people and experimenting and yeah, I just, I love the process of it and I love making art and I find in it, it becomes like a self-care, mindfulness, like everything, like everything about it, I find just brings me life when I'm doing it. Um, challenge wise, I think it is just the constant. If when people ask what you do, or if like what you went to school for, it's always like, oh, art, what are you gonna do with that? And so just keeping, I think just having to keep that confidence um, and that drive for myself to know that like, even though it might not be the most common career that will lead somewhere I, into some kind of definition of success, I think I just, just trying to keep my own drive with it and knowing and yeah, just knowing that it is something that I can do. But there's definitely a lot of moments of doubt that happen along the way, so. Um, I would say to try everything. I think that if I, yeah, like I would never want to go into art just doing one thing and just painting. Um, I think my biggest revelations with it were when I tried new things. Printmaking was a huge one um, and that kind of took my art practice into a whole different realm too. Um, and even just like my sculpture classes, that's really what brought in that interest of moving paintings into a 3D space. Um, I think the more experience you have, the more that you do, the more you'll be able to make up new creative ideas. Because I think my best ideas come from that type of experience and trying to push the boundaries of what like traditional oil paintings are. Usually they're just hanging on the wall, but I would love to bring that into a different kind of space. So yeah, try everything. <laughs> I think I it's, it's just always been really about push, pushing those boundaries and um, bringing, yeah, like basically taking the shame away from the things that are so natural about us, but that through society and the th other societal norms that we see and like we're supposed to cover them up, um, things like, yeah, like cellulite and scars and pimples and all of that, that there's a million different things that you can do to cover them up. Um, I like to create work that moves against that. So um, whenever I work with a model, I, like one of my family members, friends, whoever I'm working with, I always ask that they don't wear any makeup if they're comfortable with that because um, that's really what I want is to be able to see every single thing and I don't want to cover any of it up. So just bringing light to that and also having people see that. I think that is always what I want too is in my audience. I really hope that if people see it, that it'll bring some, there is that familiarity and that recognition and that maybe it'll start to break down some of those boundaries about what is beautiful and what should we be showing people. And yeah, I think just taking away some of that shame for women um, of what we should look like and what we should cover up, so. I work a lot with photographs, so like the, pho yeah, the photography session that I do um, gives me all of the reference images that I need. Um, and then I always end up zooming in completely to the whatever area. I always, whenever I'm doing the detail and the hype, that gets it to that point of hyperrealism. I work on small sections at a time and I'll zoom in and then um, use my tiny little brushes and get all the little, the little hairs and the little scars and freckles and everything and all the little color changes too. So it's those really detailed, subtle changes that I think really add to the hyperrealistic effect of it. Um, and then highlights too make a really big difference. Um, they always really make things pop. But I also really like to incorporate some kind of abstraction into my work. Um, I'm not naturally a very abstract artist. I always 
fall more into a more realistic representational style, but I've always really loved abstraction. So in order to do that, um, I usually try to add something in that brings in an element of abstraction. So that started with, um, I had an intro drawing class where I did a portrait of my sister and I, and it was just our faces and I'd finished it and it was completely representational. Um, and then I decided that I was going to write all over it, which gave my mom a heart attack because she had hoped that it was just gonna stay that way. Um, and then, yeah, I spent the next few hours just, I had written this, I had translated a phrase into Swiss German so that way it wouldn't be about what the words were, but it was, you would just be able to see the text. Um, and I, yeah, just hand wrote everything and I wrote it all the way down the whole drawing. And so it was just this type that ran through the drawing um, and it added a lot to it. My mom did love it more by the end, so that was good. <laughs> um, so it's called Allie. Um, it's my aunt, actually. Um, and I was, in, I was in Victoria, actually, for a trip. And I'd asked her if she was comfortable doing, this is when I first started working on all my portraits um, and I was looking for people to paint and she was pregnant at the time and I thought I'd never painted anything like that before so I asked her if she, felt, if she would feel comfortable with it so we had a little, she obviously said yes and we had a little photo shoot um, just in her bedroom too so it was really her own space, she was comfortable there. Um, I used com just completely natural lighting too and yeah it was the biggest piece I had done um, up until this point, it was in 2019, so I was still in school at this point. Um, and I, my professor, David Garneau, was a huge support during that time. Um, he went through so many photos with me, and um, this one was the first one where I really incorporated background into it too. My first two portraits, it was completely about the person, the background was a lot more neutral. Um, so it was a lot about actually incorporating a background into it and having a setting that um, connected to the person too so yeah in this case it was just in her bedroom um, and I also yeah I kept it a lot more I didn't do a ton of um, hyper realistic detail in the background there's a lot more brush strokes in it um, there's a little bit of detail in the wood grain but um, even though the background incorporated in it it was really about the person too and yeah um, I really loved just all of her she has so many freckles um there's a little the a little c-section scar to, i think it was a, oh i don't actually know um but the scar on her belly um and then just everything in her face too i worked a lot it took a long time just to get it to have to really have her likeness um to and just to yeah capture who she was in that um and that eye contact too, I think was a big part. It drew me into the photo itself. And so I really wanted to capture that too when I was painting it. So all the little highlights, the eyelashes, um, I used a tiny brush and did every single strand of hair too. Um, so it was a very labor intensive one. It was intricate, um, but I'm really, I was really happy with how it turned out. It was just a very different comp um, composition too, but it, probably still, it was 2019, but it's still one of my favorite ones. Mm -hmm.